Sunday will be over by April. Unfortunately, the media have not gone back to him to find out what exactly he meant or to find out from him the challenges he has had uh, uh, that had in inhibited the actualization of what he had but anticipated. Okay. Uh, yeah. so, so, so the point is, the, those in whose hands the security of the nation has been entrusted and honestly are not fit to be there. Okay, uh, on the back of what Mr. Akoni is saying, uh, Colonel Shiba, the uh, Security Council, is it uh, the National Security uh, Council? Or no, the Council of Council States. Of State. Council of State, that's what I was looking for. I was thinking of a National Security Council. They have concluded their meeting <laughs> and they have agreed by, by, by December. By December, we, okay. we would have Boko Haram completely extinct. Yes. Do you think this is for real? Or that they are well advised to have made that conclusion? Well, conventionally, and anything that is conventional, we don't challenge them. If the government is ready, the issue of the Sandisa forest or anywhere the Boko Haram are hiding, they can get rid of them in one month. If the machine order is given, the resources are given, the backup is given to them, and people are made to play their roles. Where are the mobile police today? They are the Kulangu of yesterday. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria entrusted the safety of life and property in the hands of the Nigerian police. All other services are expected to back them up in terms of whatever they are doing. Now, when this insurgency of a thing was coming up, we expected the mobile police to take charge. Then, if it's overpowering them, they hand over to the army and take a position behind the army. As the army is marching forward, the mobile police are taking positions so that more troops are released to go forward. Then we have the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps who are supposed to be the second eleven of the Nigerian army. They should release the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, who have been well fast and trained in the theory of small arms. Let them man the roadblocks and the checkpoints. Let them guard the locusts while the military men are in the forward lines to see what they can do. And, of course, forest guards, border guards. If you go to Zambisa Forest, go to Yankari Game Reserve, if you go to Apaka Forest in Kaduna State, you can't see any forest guards there. They are old. They don't even know what's happening in those forests. Three quarters of the forest are inhabited by non-indigenous, and nobody bothers to know who occupies where. Goza Hill, for example, is a training ground for Nigerian mobile police. And until Boko Haram occupied that place, nobody said anything. Until where we are today. So unless we return back, we, it's not a battle for the army alone. Let the Nigerian security and civil defense corps came up. They are the second eleven. They have been training arms. They should leave the issue of vandalization of fives to the police. Let the mobile police, let them rise up to the occasion too. Move them to the forward lines, let them man the roadblock and the checkpoints where these soldiers are, so that more troops can be released to penetrate the, 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 the Sambisa forest. But again, the issue of penetration of Sambisa forest too has to be taken with concern because of the, of the 200 guests we have in that place. We want to extricate them before we launch the operation into full scale war. Otherwise, if you launch that operation, you are likely to suffer what called 50-50% casualty. I'm mostly. talking about the 200 girls. Um, some speculations have been going around that even the suicide bombers, the female suicide bombers that we have now, that it could be you know, some of these girls. How true can this be? I'm not doubting that. Because, one, if you go back to Iraq, the IRS, Irish, uh, uh, the, 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 the breakaway faction of the Islamic sect in uh, Iraq, uh, between the border of, uh, of, uh, of, of Turkey and Iraq, they, they abducted uh, 20 boys, and when the, the parents went to the government that they want their boys back, those who kidnapped them told them that they did not kidnap them, that they are their visitors. And any time the boys are ready to go back, they are going to release them. But what they were doing for the boys was to indoctrinate them, to radicalize them, so that at the end of the day, when they say, okay, you can go back, the boys are not ready to go back, because already they have been radicalized, they have been brainwashed. So they prefer to stay in that group rather than going back to where they're coming from. The same story here. If the girls are there, yes. They have been indoctrinated, yes. They have given them everything they think they need in life. Okay, great. And they've told them the reason why they should do what they are doing. So this is what we are looking at. So the major effort we have is how to de-radicalize. The suicide bomber, yes, is indoctrinated. How do you even indoctrinate him? These are the issues. So it's not a surprise that we have suicide bombers now among the, uh, the uh, female uh, uh, outfits. Okay, now we've since been joined by the Executive Director, Center for Rule of Law, Olashukbo Uju. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. 
Good morning. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, we've been talking about the um, state of security in Nigeria. What will be your take so far, looking at what has happened, for instance, in the last um, two weeks? Uh, I think uh, maybe it's better we begin to look at the state of insecurity in Nigeria. Uh, because to say the state of security is to say that, yes, uh, things are in place and are therefore no cause for alarm. I think there is serious cause for alarm now. And how we got to where we are, I, I don't know who can explain it. It was not like this. When we were in primary school, secondary school, even university when we were fighting the military and all the rest, uh, we were still having some measure of uh, security. We knew we could, we, could, we could predict that, no, they won't do this, they won't do this. But now, you cannot predict anything. And how did the situation degenerate? It's just by sheer incompetence. And because we do have patriots in positions of power and authority, there is a notorious country in this world. That country, if you kill one of them, they will kill 30 in retaliation. Now they are engaged in a similar thing, and people are now begging them, please, enough is enough, enough is enough. That is when you have patriots in power who will not toy with the life of a single citizen. Do you know thousands of Nigerians that have been killed by Boko Haram before the abduction of the girls? Nothing happened. I expected the president with all the powers invested in him by law and by the people and all the resources at his disposal to move his office to Bono State. Immediately they started that thing. Anywhere the president moves, the military, the armed forces moves with him. If he has gone there to say, sorry, I'm going to govern from here for the next two months, you can be sure they will flush all those people out. But he waited until the thing now has, has blown out of proportion. Now there is need for $1 billion to go and now begin to fight what we will have finished with $10,000 when it started. So I begin to think that, is it that we have callous or wicked people in power who really don't care about what happens to the people, or people who are not security conscious have listened to what they have said. It's very, very correct. If they are security conscious, there is no way they will allow things to degenerate. There is no way you will have forests without gaps. Anytime I move in Lagos, I, I look for parks. I don't, it's only when I go out, out of the country that I see parks, where I can go and relax with my family and all that. In Nigeria, no parks. If there is a park, you begin, you, you even be afraid to go there because the, 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 the miscreants will take it over. So, I think we have serious problem of insecurity. And the primary purpose of government is security and welfare of the people. So apparently government has abandoned that primary purpose or they are incapable of doing it. Therefore, we are now on our own. So uh, I, think, I think it is now beyond the government. So what would be your own recipe, for instance, to solving this? Solving the insecurity problem? Uh, I can't see the solution in democracy now. Sorry, I know what I'm saying. We fought for this democracy. But a democracy that is producing these kinds of characters that we are having is already compromised. It's no longer democracy. A democracy that afflicts people with poverty so that with a bag of rice, they, 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 they replace national infrastructure with stomach infrastructure, deliberately made so, then their democracy is no longer the PD, genuine democracy. So we need some intervention by the people themselves. It is now time for people to take their faith into their hands and don't wait for any government. The parents in the Chibok, gather yourself together, see what you can do to go and get your children back. Because I don't see any government begin along with you. You've had. Already, I've also made my investigation. They are already being judged. Now, the female bombers you are seeing, within 50 days, if you have a child, you can change the mind of a child within 50 days. And the child will do whatever you tell him or her to do. 50 days is a long time. And those people, with what with the products that we are seeing, Boko Haram are not refrains. They are people who are highly intelligent. You can, you, can, you can measure them with the product 
of what they are doing. Because not, an illiterate will not sit down and begin to operate like this. They, 